Hi everyone, it's Monique Brown from MotorCityMoxie.com. It's the arsenal for beauty, wellness, and feminine allure. And I have something to share with you today. I, um, you know I can only teach and speak from experience, right? And so this has really been on my heart to share. And um, I want to tell you ladies, do not become his default chick. Do not become his default chick. You might be saying, well, Monique, what is default? What does default mean? Well, default means a failure to, to fail to participate in. And you can secure a relationship by default. Something When something is secure by default, it's because it happened through a lack of positive action without rather than a conscious decision. So through a lack of positive action rather than a conscious decision. And I have a, a good example to share with you, like I said, because I only teach from experience. I met this guy in college. I was 20 years old. Dear 20-year-old self, I was 20 years old. He was seven years older than me. We became good friends. And I remember I had a bad day at work when I was a teacher. And uh, he was trying to come for me. He was like, hey, let's go, to, let's go to London. I was like, okay, cool. So we booked our tickets that day. We ended up flying to London to go visit my, my family. And uh, my cousins picked us up from the airport, my, my male cousins, my guy cousins. And here I am with this guy who was not my husband, which is weird and um, very inappropriate in my family. But um, they were my guy cousins and they were cool anyway. So they were just like, hey, whatever, Monique. <laughs> but anywho, so we're in the airport and one of my guy cousins asked, asked him and he says something to the extent of, is Monique your girlfriend? Are you all headed towards marriage? What's up? So the guy, my friend, friend, the guy that I was with, my default relationship, he responded by saying something like, hey, you know, I'll push Monique in a wheelchair if I have to. And he said it with such endearment. I'm like, this is some nonsense. He said, I will push Monique in a wheelchair if I had to. Not, yes, this is my lady, this is my girl, I love her, whatever it is. So that was a clue for me. I, I thought it was sweet and endearing. I was 24 at the time and I didn't know any better, to be very frank with you. I didn't know any better. But here's here's the part, here's the part about a lack of when you enter into a relationship, a, do, a default relationship is formed through a lack of positive action. So here's a, a really good example that when it really, really hit me. I was in the airport, I was in the airplane, and um, on the way back, because he stayed there, he wanted to go to Germany and fly around, I, I, I came back. And on the airplane, in the exit row, before we are about to uh, depart, the flight attendant comes in and she talks to the people in the exit row and she says, hello, do you understand where you're sitting? This is an exit row and in case of emergency, are you willing and are you able to assist? One of the passengers nods his head in affirmation. The flight attendant says, sir, I need a verbal affirmation from you. She said it loud and clear. <laughs> I said, you know what, that's it. There you go. I need a verbal affirmation from you. Although your actions may say one thing, what are you really feeling on the inside, right? I need a verbal affirmation from you. From my experiences, from my discussions, from my observations, there are really two types of men in relationships. There are those who sort of go with the flow, and then there are those who are the pursuers. The guy who, when he sees you, he's going to be like, oh, that's her right there. That's, that's me. I want her. I'm going after her right there. That's who I want. Because men know what they want. I sincerely believe that men know what they want. And when they want you, they will pursue you. That has been my experience. So, um, so I really want, I say that to say that we owe it to ourselves, that we cannot default on our obligations to ourselves because what often happens is that you meet some guy, yeah, it's fun, he's cool, you're not really sure if he's somebody that you would want to spend, he's, you're, not, you're not really sure if he's a compatible life partner, but he's fun. And all of a sudden, you're spending all this time together, you meet every day, you're going out, and all of a sudden, boom, you're in a relationship, you're in a relationship and you didn't really want to be in a relationship or maybe you did but he didn't come out and say hey I want you to be my girl I want to be with you now it was just about default relationship and if he sees someone out there that he wants to pursue he's gonna pursue her because he sees what he wants and men are hunters despite despite living in 2012 we cannot we cannot get away from the differences in our gender designs we cannot get away from that so I say all this to say that I really want to leave you with my three rules to make sure that you are not in a in a default relationship and to make sure that make sure that you do not become his default chick. Some of you might be saying, well, I'm cool with being default. What if he's my default man? What if he's my default? Okay? Listen. Men men choose first. And then you have to choose him back. You cannot choose the man. He has to choose you first. And then you have to choose him back. Because whatever you say, a, a man is not going to go with you. He's not going to pursue a relationship with you. He might you out you might have sex. But that's about it. Because if he doesn't want you, that's the end of the story. You cannot sort of change his mind unless he really gets to see the person that you are from the inside out, right? But typically men have to be physically attracted to you first 
um, because they are aesthetic creatures, men are aesthetic creatures, and then they have to fall in love with you, right? They have to fall in love with your feminine allure, which is your gift offering, that they can sort of unravel carefully and take time to do that. So that's what, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you are watching this and you're saying, well, hey, he's my default dude, what about that? Men choose first and then you have to choose back. If that's what you have going on for you, then I encourage you to, I challenge you to think, to think outside of the box because those type of situations ultimately do not work to a woman's advantage. They do, they do not benefit women oftentimes. Um, and so I want to leave you with my three rules to make sure that you do not become his default chick. Number one, stop chilling. Do not chill. Stop chilling because here's the deal. When you're chilling, especially when you're in a home environment, all you do, you're seeing each other, you're in this space, and then you have all this sort of sexual tension. Get out of the house. Go out. Do activities. Um, tell him to say, hey, you know what? I was thinking about going to a movies, going to a house tour, going bike riding in the park, doing something outside. Because if you stay in the house all day, next thing you know, you're going to end up butt naked in somebody's basement. <laughs> like, how did I get here? What's going on? How did I get here? I told myself I was going to do this. Listen, right? Listen. I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me, right? I was a type of person, matter of fact, this goes into number two. I was the type of person to, to say, hey, what you doing? I'm in your neighborhood, let's go out, let's go get something to eat, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you don't have the money? That's okay, I got you. Don't worry about it, I got you. Oh, you at home? Okay, cool. Can I stop by? Blah, 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 blah. No. Number two. Rule number two is allow him to invite you over. Allow him to invite you out. If you, if the woman, as in me, I was always the one who was jumping and going and moving and pushing and doing everything too hard, it's not going to work because you'll never know if he is sincerely interested, if he's a pursuer or if he's just the type of brother who is going with the flow. So number one, number one, um, stop chilling. Number two, allow him to invite you over and invite you out. Because if you're always going over there, you never really know how he feels about you. And um, you want to be able to experience him and see him in different type of situations, too. So that is a good segue to number three. The third rule to make sure that you do not become his default chick is the two times a week rule. Do not see each other more than twice a week. Maybe three times if you really feel each other. But do not see each other more than two times a week. And the, the rationale behind that is that you want to be able to build attraction. <sighs> You got to be able to build attraction because once you're in these sort of default relationships and and you're in it by default, resentment can build and resentment cr can create because you're with somebody that you really don't like because you never had an opportunity to allow the attraction to build between you and to see who this person is, who this person really is, right? If you're just always in the house watching movies, chilling, coming over, watching movies all the time, eh, that's not going to work. You want to be able to experience and to observe and to see how that person um, responds and acts in, in, in regular situations because you want to make sure, hey, is this somebody that could ultimately be a life partner for me? Okay, so I say all of that. Um, is there anything else I want to say that I wrote in my notes? Yeah, so another thing I put warmth and mystery. If you see each other two times, maybe three times a week, if you're really feeling each other, is that you allow, you know, you really want to show yourself to have, you allow yourself to be very warm and mysterious at the same time. Warmth is what attracts a person to you as a woman, and that mystery is what will keep him engaged. That applies to both, you know, men and women in your relationships. If you don't get along with a lot of women and they think that you're kind of stuck up or whatever, it's because you're not warm. So you want to exude warmth. Warmth is what will keep people interested. It, will, it is what will keep their guard down, and that mystery will keep both men and women engaged and, and attracted to you. Um, so these are sort of these feminine philosophies that I'm discovering, and I'm, I really bear witness to its truth. This sort of feminine allure that I discussed, not sexual energy, but feminine allure is what is, is what, it's, it's a gift offering to the masculine man. And it's something that he will, it's a gift that he can unravel and, and, and unwrap with care. So I am discovering these feminine philosophies and I really invite you to, to explore them with me. I want you to explore them with me and you can do so by subscribing to the Moxie Manifesto. Also, I'm going to be hosting a teleseminar soon so you can um, subscribe to the Moxie Manifesto you can get more information because I really want to share these philosophies with you. I think that they will be, I think that you could benefit from them as I'm learning. Not necessarily benefit from them, but I want to share these with you because when you're excited about something, you want to share it, right? Right. So, 
I hope you found this information to be beneficial. If you like the video, click the like button below. Subscribe, um, comment. I want to hear what you have to say. I like to, I'm, you know, I'm interested in your own responses. So, with that being said, I hope you found this information to be beneficial. Subscribe to the Moxie Manifesto by clicking the link below. It's your weekly to-do tactics to help you be good, look good, and do better. Take care.